there are about 40 color correction related video effects inside Premiere Pro. So I'm going to show you my list of recommended and useful effects in this lesson and also point out the ones that are unnecessary and explain briefly why that's the case. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to Premiere Pro Projects and open up Effects. I set up this very basic project here with this image from Wikipedia Commons and I've applied some effects to it which we're going to get back to later. Let's start off by taking a look at the video effects by going up to the Effects tab here and going to Video Effects. Let's take a look at Color Correction Effects. There are almost 20 effects inside this Color Correction category, which is not 40 as I mentioned earlier, but there are many other Color Correction Effects kind of scattered around amongst the various categories here. Let's just take a look around a little bit more in some other categories here. Go to Adjust, and here are a whole bunch of Color Correction Effects in Adjust as opposed to Color Correction, like Auto Color, Auto Contrast, Auto Levels, which is Tonality, Proc Amp, which is Saturation, Shadow Highlight, these guys are all color correction effects, and if you check out some other categories, you're going to find some other effects that fall into the color correction category. So rather than sort of piecemeal going through all this thing, I've put together a list for you. You can track that list down inside the Working Files folder, so let's go do that. Minimize this, go to Working Files, go to Assets, and open up this P-Pro color correction effect right there on the PDF. Make this 100% make it easier to see it. i put together a list of all the color correction effects that I think are color correction oriented. And I've divided them up into four categories, recommended, useful, worth checking out, and unnecessary. Let me just scroll down here a bit and talk about the five that are put into the recommended color correction effects category. I put two here at the top, Luma Curve and RGB Curves. Luma Curve is a subset of RGB Curves. My workflow is to adjust tonality and color separately and independently. So I do that by working with Luma Curve and Fast Color Corrector. If you want to take the approach that's used inside SpeedGrade and used by many other folks who work with color, which is to adjust tonality first and then adjust color while adjusting tonality again, then RGB curves is a way to do that. And I'll explain that in more detail in the course, but these basically are very closely related to each other. I use the fast color corrector to adjust hue or color. It does it without affecting tonality all that much, just a little bit. You can also adjust saturation with the fast color corrector. Scrolling down a bit farther here. The three-way color corrector really is the powerhouse effect. It takes a little bit of experience to get used to working with it. I'll discuss this later in the course. You do not want to use it to adjust luminance though because it does something called crushing blacks. It is a flaw inside this effect, so you don't want to adjust tonality with the three-way color corrector. You can use the fast color corrector to do that or luma curve to do that. RGB color corrector is very much like luma curve, but it uses sliders instead of graphs. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Scrolling down a bit farther here are my useful color correction effects, and there's a handful here. Several of these effects allow you to highlight a particular color in a clip and adjust it in some way. You can highlight a color make everything else desaturated, make everything else grayscale. I've also added the crop effect here. The crop effect is really not a color correction effect, but you use it if you want to highlight just a certain area on a screen that has a certain color that you want to work on, and then you turn the crop off as you continue to work with that clip. Scroll down a little bit farther. I've got tint here, which gives your entire clip a tint, as you'd expect, typically sepia tone. The one drawback to tint is that it reduces contrast. And finally, the track matte key, again, it's not a color correction effect per se, but it is going to be used a lot when you do secondary color correction, where you're just highlighting a portion of a clip, a part of the frame, and you want to adjust color or tonality within that portion of that clip. There are three effects that I consider worth checking out more for fun than for any practical application. These are all called cross-processing effects. They allow you to change the color channels dramatically in a clip, arithmetic, channel mixer, and invert. I recommend simply that you apply this to some clips and just kind of play with them, and then you may suddenly discover something that looks really cool you can save that as an effect preset. And then finally, here are the unnecessary color correction effects. There are a whole bunch of them, as you can see here. Frequently, they are redundant. They duplicate what you can do with the other effects that I've already shown you. Some of them are automated, which is the last thing you want to do when you're doing color correction. You don't want to do anything that's automated. You want to take control of your color correction. And some actually damage the video. They do what's called banding, or they clip the whites or crush the blacks. And I'll talk about clipping and crushing later, but basically they just kind of compress blacks and whites into very narrow areas, not what you want to do. If you want to run through them and check them all out, be my guest. You can see my reasoning behind why I've put them in the unnecessary color correction effects category. If you want to track them down inside Premiere Pro, I put their effect category here in parentheses. So the auto color effect is inside the adjust group there. All right, let's go back to Premiere Pro. I want to show you those five recommended effects here briefly. I'm going to cover them in much more detail in the course, but I want to give you a sense of how they work. So I'm going to go over to Effect Controls here. I've got those five effects on this clip right there. I'm going to start off with Luma Curve here. Open it up and turn it on. Luma Curve is a graph. 
If you worked inside Photoshop, you've seen something like this with curves inside Photoshop. The bottom of the curve relates to the dark areas of the clip, the shadows. The top area relates to the highlights up there, the white, for example. And then you can adjust things in the middle like midtones. So for example, if I move the graph here at the bottom to the right, that makes it darker. You can see the graph here getting darker as well. And see how the black areas, the shadows get darker, but the highlights do not get darker. They still stay bright, as you can see up there. If I take it to the other direction, lift it up like this, then it makes the dark areas more like light gray, something you usually don't want to do. The top end works differently. If I slide it to the left, that makes the bright areas brighter. This makes the bright areas darker by pulling it down like that. It does not affect the black areas, the shadows. I can add points to it by clicking here and adding a point. This is typically what people do when they want to increase contrast. They put a point there and put another point down here. You have a steeper line here, and that makes the contrast greater and makes the image kind of pop. That's basically how the curve approach works, and I'm going to talk about this in more detail as we go through the course. Going down here to RGB curves. RGB curves has that same waveform scope in it, as well as scopes for the three individual color channels. Go back to Luma Curve, you'll see that this is called the Luma Waveform, but it's the same as the master control down here. So if you want to adjust tonality and color, you work with the RGB curves. If you want to adjust just tonality, you can work with Luma Curve like that. I'll turn you off, go to RGB curves. There's the master control. But let's say if I want to adjust color, I can take the red and add more red. Let's see what happens there. All the way across the board, it'll add red. Or I can add red just in the highlighted areas or just in the shadows, things like that, as well as blue and green. Or I can take red out, which kind of leaves blue and green behind. All right, I'll undo that, turn you off for a second. So that's the two basic curves approach. The fast color corrector and the three-way color corrector use color wheels. We saw this when we worked with a vector scope. I'll go back to the vector scope here by going to the panel menu of the reference monitor and going down to vector scope. This basically duplicates this. If I want to pull a color toward red, for example, warm this thing up a bit, make it look more like a sunset, pull this toward the orange like that. Now we're making things red, and you see how the vector scope is sliding toward red as well. There. If I go back to the waveform monitor, you can see not much happens regarding tonality. I click on the waveform, you'll see that the tonality changes ever so slightly as I move this around. If I go to an extreme level, you'll see this thing change a little bit, but not anywhere near as much as it would if I worked with curves or with RGB color corrector. This also has tonality controls. I'll scroll down to them. They're called input and output. This thing works very much like the curves in that this makes things blacker. This thing makes highlights brighter. This makes the highlights duller, dulls things down a bit. This makes the black areas kind of like light gray, makes them duller too, like that. And there's also a saturation control here. It allows you to make the image have more intense color. All kinds of good things inside the fast color corrector. I'll just turn that off, reset you. I'm going down the notch here. I'm going to go to the RGB color corrector. And this works very much like RGB curves, except that this uses sliders and numeric values rather than curves. You can keyframe the slider or numeric values, and you cannot keyframe the curves. So if you want to change tonality or color over time, you can do that with the RGB color corrector. And it has what's called gamma pedestal and gain, which is a little confusing. It's not the same as shadows or blacks and highlights or whites, but it works similarly. And down below you, you've got the individual color channels also split up into gamma pedestal and gain. You can adjust them very much like the curves, except that here you use sliders or numeric values. In addition, it has something called secondary color correction. Select something within the clip based on the hue or the saturation or luma or any combination of the above and work only on that area. It's a fairly high level way of doing secondary color correction, which we're going to cover later in the course. Let's take a look at the three-way color corrector now. We'll close you down, turn you off. Three-way color corrector really is a fairly complex tool. It has wheels for each of the tonality values, shadows, midtones, and highlights. It also has a set of wheels for the master control. If you click on master and make an adjustment, it adjusts them all equally. See how that works? If I want to adjust, let's say, just red inside the shadows, if I go like that and make the shadows redder, you see how the red starts showing up in the shadows that are kind of extreme, but I just want to show you that works. I want to add red to the highlights, the white up here. Same routine, just drag that out there. Make it extreme and start seeing the red showing up there, only in the highlights, not here in the midtones, not in the shadows. So that allows you to work within those tonality ranges. And the tonality ranges are set by default here, but you can adjust the tonality ranges down here to decide what would be considered black or midtone or what would be considered a highlight. Going down a little bit farther, you'll see that it has a secondary color correction as well, just like the RGB color correction effect. And several other things here that, again, add some more complexity to this effect. So that's just a taste of the color correction effects here inside Premiere Pro, but I think it gives you a sense of the different ways that they work, the color wheels, the graphs, the sliders, that kind of stuff. 
also that you have a choice. You can decide which approach you want to take when you're doing color correction. You don't have to follow a single way when you want to do color correction. You can decide whether you want to use curves or whether you want to use the sliders or color wheels, what have you. Now, because the color correction effects that you're probably going to end up using are kind of scattered around amongst various categories, I recommend that you create a folder for the color correction effects that you want to work with. So to do that, go over to Effects, and then click on the panel menu here, and click on New Custom Bin, not Presets Bin. We're making a custom bin where we're putting a bunch of effects there. New Custom Bin. You can name it whatever you want. We'll call it My Color Correction Effects. And what we want to do is put color correction effects inside there. So to do that, we first go to Video Effects, and let's go to Color Correction. We'll grab the few that we want to work with there. We'll start off by getting the big guys. We'll get the Fast Color Corrector and drag that down to the new folder by doing this and grabbing it and dragging it down like that. Now notice it still stays here, but now it's inside this folder as well. But we're not removing it, we're just adding it down to this folder here. Grab Luma Curve, the RGB Color Corrector, RGB Curves, Three-Way Color Corrector. And while we're here inside the Color Corrector group, we want to get Tint as well. And there are a few more here. Change the color, for example, that you want to drag down there as well. And there are a couple of others kind of scattered around a bunch of other categories. For example, Crop is inside the Transform category here. So you go down here, get Crop, and add that to your group as well. And then you want to also add the Track Mat Key, which is inside the Keying category, and add that down to your group as well. Pull it down, down like that. Now I'm going to delete this when we're done here because I want to make sure that my effects panel looks like everyone else's effects panel. I'm not going to assume that you're going to do this, but I think you're going to find that it's useful because these guys are kind of scattered around. As long as they're all down here in one place, you can access your color correction effects very quickly there. So the reason I've walked you through all this is because I want to help you simplify and streamline the color correction process. There is kind of a mysterious aura surrounding color correction, and I want to make sure I dispel that notion. It is not that mysterious. It's not that difficult. And also because there are about 40 different color correction effects inside of Premiere Pro, I want you to know that you don't need to worry about all those 40 different effects. Just focus on the 10 or so that I've recommended to you, and that should help you as you move forward in your color correction work.